I'm Alan Massengill reporting for Ring TV from Van Nuys, California, outside the world-famous Ten Goose Boxing Gym. Well, here's a question. How do you turn a really bad year into a good one almost immediately? Well, John Molina Jr. has that answer. Last year in April, he lost to Lucas Matisse in what turned out to be, in many people's minds, the fight of the year. He knocked down Matisse twice in that fight, then he was knocked down twice, and it was over in the 11th round. Then for some reason, for the second time, he fires trainer Joe Goosen, and he has a fight in September against former world champion Umberto Soto. Soto is a legend, but he has more miles on him than a 57 Mercedes. And Molina lost that fight and looked bad doing it. Well, after that, he gets smart again in many people's minds and rehires Joe Goosen. And he also has manager, the kingmaker, Al Heyman, who now has a fight lined up for Molina against the problem, Adrian Broner in March. Let's talk to John about all these issues. So John, you're back with Joe Goosen for the third time. The question is, what up with that? Have you guys figured it out yet? And most people believe you work best when you work with Joe. Yeah, I mean, uh, third time, who's counting? But uh, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely, uh, I've been in my best wars with Joe. He's a good, calm voice in the corner. Um, it, it's not a matter of uh, me disliking or liking something better. It was a matter of the behind the scenes, what people don't see. The, the, the face value is what they do see. They don't see the, drama the dramatics behind it. Not to say that there's a drama soap opera behind the scenes, but, you know, fighters are, are, are human beings as well. We have families that, you know, sometimes we got to travel great distance to uh, come to work, so to speak, be in the gym. And uh, we're, we're happy where we're at. We're, we're back again. And no matter if me and Joe are working or not working, we've always remained friends. So that, that's the most important thing. There's a chemistry there. There's a friendship there that goes above and beyond boxing. And that's very important in this game. So uh, we're here again. We're, we're going to go up after our, our, our biggest opponent to date, uh, Adrian Broner. And we're excited. We're excited to be working together. Let's talk about the, the theme of you going into this great opportunity you have in March on NBC. Uh, we look back at last year, you lose two fights, won the fight of the year. Uh, you go from a position where we wonder if John Molina is going to be fighting at your nearest club, you know, after losing to Soto, and here you are with this opportunity. Put it in perspective how you take a bad year, go into 2015, and immediately got a chance to turn it around into a good year, John. Uh, everything happens for a reason, and uh, I hate to sound cliche, but I have the best manager in the world, and, and Al Heyman, and uh, he gets the job done. But again, fighters in, in the position that I'm in, people enjoy a fight. They want to see someone that leaves it all in the ring. I'm more of your your uh, meats and potato type fighter. I'm the guy that that does the the, the, the work. You know, the, the working man can can relate to my story because. Uh, you know, I'm not the most God-gifted talent technical-wise, I'll be the first to admit it, but I, what I do excel in is heart, my chin, my power that I have, that I possess in both hands, and these are, I grind fights out, and the fans enjoy that. They know they're not going to pay money to go see me dance with the stars, they're going to go in there, they're going to get a fight. This is what people enjoy. People are pay paying their hard-earned money to watch two gladiators, two modern-day gladiators get it on, and, and, and I take that very serious because, remember, boxing is provided for my family. It's made my, my future very successful. So I will never neglect, never disrespect, or never spit in the face of, of boxing because of what it's done for me. And if people are gonna keep me relevant, uh, pay their hard earned money to watch me fight in that ring, they're gonna get a fight. I guarantee you that. They're not gonna get me running around in the ring. I'm going in there to fight. And, and that's, that's what it is. It's never been said better. That's exactly why people love to see people like you fight. Rios, Gennady Golovkin, those type of, those type of fighters that, that bring it. That being said, how do you get Adrian Broner to get into the type of fight that you want him to fight because there's a good chance that you're going to have to deal with his speed, his footwork, and then he's going to run if you tag him a few times. That's what I'm thinking you're preparing for. So tell us what you expect with Broner. Can you get him in there, get in front of him, and have him engage? Well, lack thereof footwork I mean uh, I would venture to say that his footwork is, is very absent in this point of his career uh, his hand speed is phenomenal I'll give him that you can't neglect or 
are down talk the accolades that he's accomplished in the sport of boxing. You got to give him that. Granted, he is flamboyant and braggadocious, for lack of a better term. Um, <laughs> Big mouth? Does that work? Uh, that uh, works. You, you want to get into that? Uh, right? I, I don't want to get into that because we could say all we want, we could dance all we want, we could talk about what all we want. But March seventh, it's going to be me and him in the ring. And um, is he a talent? Absolutely. Did he have a uh, an excellent amateur career? A hundred percent. But, uh, you know, he, he seems to have had problems with fighters of my style. And he obviously thinks he sees something he likes in me, and we obviously think we see something we like in him. So at the end of the day, when it all boils down to you got to remember this. We called him out a year ago. He didn't pick me. I chose him. That's the reality of it. And you can do your homework on the YouTube. You can, you can look on, on, on the record. We did call him out. It just took about a year for it to finally happen, and now it's here today. Um, it's going to be a hell of a fight. Uh, to get Adrian Broner to do what I want, I don't care for what Adrian Broner is preparing or doing. If I did that, I wouldn't accomplish what I need to accomplish in this gym. I need to work on what, what myself is. I was almost going to call myself in third person, but I hate that. Um, I got to work on what, what I do best, and we're implementing that game plan. You know, I'm not worried if he's going to dance, moonwalk, shake it, do the, the mamba in there. I don't care what he does in there. All I know is March 7th, he's going to be in front of me. I'm going to implement my will, he's going to implement his will, and we're going to see who's left standing at the end. We'll catch up with you, John. We wish you the best. Train hard. Always. And every, I feel good because every time me and you have an interview or have a conversation, it's always an amazing, amazing night of boxing. So <laughs> I'm very happy. I feel good about the way everything's working out right now. So thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, you seem to have good performances after I talk to yeah, you. Yeah, matter of fact, every fight from here on out, I will put it in my contract that you need to be in the forefront of things. The Alan Massengale yeah, clause. Yeah, absolutely. You're the best, buddy. Thank Thanks. You, I appreciate it. All right. <laughs> there is no doubt that former three-division world champion Adrian Broner will be the favorite in this fight. But remember, Broner has one loss. It was against Marcos Maidana. Marcos Maidana fights a heck of a lot like Lucas Matisse. And look what Molina almost did with Matisse. As always in boxing, Anything can happen, but this should be an action-packed fight. It's coming up March 7th on NBC Sports. I'm Alan Massengale reporting from Van Nuys, California.